Imagine you're given a few cameras, a laptop, and a video switcher, and your task is to set it up as quickly as possible and be ready for a show. How fast can you do it? And what tools would you need to make that happen? Well, the OC GoStream Duet is trying to be the answer to that question. This little switcher is a four input, five input, eight, 15 input switcher that is really designed to operate alone from computer hardware. A lot of older switchers, switchers that I started using early on in my career, were all entirely hardware based. If you wanted to change a menu setting, you just went into the menu, changed it. Modern video switchers are really kind of computer driven. They're almost joysticks for a larger chassis that takes the commands from the control surface. They're infinitely configurable, but they're also really complicated. This device has a little bit of an old school feel to it. It's designed and thought out as a device that can stand alone for your event. So everything is menu driven and it has a tactile response. So it's designed to be very, very simple in its operation. And that comes at the consequence of not being infinitely configurable. But I think this device actually strikes a really good balance in between functionality uh, on a hardware side, on a simplicity side, and with the new 2.1.1 software, it also has the flexibility to be controlled through a computer, giving you the flexibility that you need. So going back to our original question, this switcher tries to answer the question of how do I set things up as fast as possible by offering us both SDI and HDMI connections. So cameras usually come as SDI connections. And with most of the switchers on the market today, you either have an HDMI switcher or an SDI switcher. And you need to use converters like this to format, convert from HDMI to SDI or vice versa to get it into the switcher. Having the option of input one, two, three, and four can either be HDMI or SDI, not simultaneously, but one at a time. Any configuration of that, you could have one SDI source, three HDMIs, two and two, it doesn't matter. You just plug it in and it shows up on the switcher. So you have four sources, no converters, very convenient, very quick to set up. That fifth source is part of what makes this switcher really unique. It's not just a fifth source, it's actually multiple sources. So the first most obvious use of it is the SD card slot. So you can actually record internally to the SD card, but you can also play back from that SD card as well. That aux source button can also control an NDI source, NDI HX specifically. If you have that device, you can bring it in over the network and that can be your aux source. Finally, if you have a USB-C camera, like a webcam or modern DSLR or a mirrorless camera that has a USB-C output, Theoretically, you could hook up one, two, three, four as cameras. And then if you wanted a fifth camera, you could actually use it over that USB-C port. Let's look at the hardware itself and see why this is really a standalone switcher that doesn't require a computer. So one of the first things that I love about this, I really love the layout that there are two rows of physical buttons. So our top row is for program, our bottom is preview, and we can see red is on air, green is in preview. And then we have a big cut and transition button. So I really like those because again, it's tactile. I don't need to use any software. I don't need to know preview or program or set it all up in the software. It's all physically here. It's telling me exactly what's gonna happen. One is on program, two is in preview. If I press transition, it will go in transition. Another big standout feature from an ATEM switcher, an ATEM Mini Pro, for example, is that this switcher has a physical T-bar. When I first got it, I, I was like, you know, that's a little, feels a little flimsy, but the more I've used it, I don't think it's gonna break off. I think it's gonna last. Now, one of the things I would caution about is uh, the drag on it feels pretty good. It has a pretty good handle feel to it. But the thing that you need to know is that if this gets bumped at all, you can actually trigger both sources with barely realizing it. So we look at the multi-view here. I'm on one, I'm just fading into, there you can see it, but there's certainly a range where both are on air, your mid transition, and it doesn't really feel like it. So I would make sure when you start, make sure that T-bar is all the way up and out of the way. Thirdly, I just, I wish every switcher had this. I wish every technical director, video director knew how to use this better, this next transition area. I can change the background, the downstream key or the upstream key. And if that key is on air, I have an on-air light, so I just cut my title on there. 
and the preview shows me what's going to happen. So if I have my background selected and not my downstream key, my next camera cut, which is camera two, is still gonna show that overlay. Transition to that. Or if I press both here, downstream key and background, now when I transition, the bug, the lower third, and the background will all change and give it to me clean. This is so big of a deal. These little five buttons are such a big deal for being able to cleanly bring keys in and off on the air. And I think that's just really, really important. It's a well thought out little piece of the puzzle here. Finally, playback. So a lot of times if I were to build out a system, what I have on my multi viewer right now is, uh, I think if we look at it, a really, really typical scenario, right? I have two cameras, camera I'm talking to, the interface camera here, and then I have a third source, input three is my, my presentation computer, and input four is the computer software. But there's also a couple different other sources here. So if I are super source, you can see I have a two box here and I have that routed up. Uh, but I can also route, I have a playback engine here. And so if I press play up here, that background starts changing. Now I have a really interesting background that's moving while I'm in my two box. A little more visual interest. And if I want to, I can still press DSK and I can transition that on and I can bring on my key layer as well. So I have a pretty complex setup here that you'd think I'm using a big switcher on, but I'm actually just using this little switcher, all physically based, haven't touched any software, and uh, that's all I really need. The cool thing with this is if you only have a couple elements that you need to play back, you don't have like a really complex playback list, uh, it's totally possible to run your show all out of this one thing. So when I put aux in preview, it loads the very first frame of the video that I have queued. I don't have to hit play. As soon as I transition this to air, it will just go. So I see the first frame loaded and I hit auto and it plays. It takes the sound because I've set that up in the menu. And then whatever is in preview, as soon as it hits the end last frame, it's going to cut to that source. So five, four, three, two, one. And now I'm on air here. And then I can just start my show from there. I'm going to use that same setup. I'm going to go into the software. I'm going to hit repeat video and then choose pavement background loop for slide. I'm going to choose that one. Press play over here. And you can see that I've got my two box going now with that background again. So I can choose super source and hit plays. Now let's round out this review with some areas of improvement. One of my big concerns is uh, the multi viewer isn't very flexible. So let's go into the software again here and we'll go into switcher. That's in settings actually. So going to settings and multi view display, the only thing that I can change in the multi view, so I click here, is just the order of preview and program. That's it. I can change the names of the inputs, which is cool, but I can't change the locations of any of these. I can just turn on audio meters, turn those on and off. But as far as rearranging the input sources, I don't have that option. And I think it's a real shame because since this is a hardware based switcher, we want to use this just as software only. As soon as I pop open that menu, it covers up input four and it covers up my audio meters. If I'm mixing my own show, if I need to do my own thing, that might be really bad. And I think it would be really helpful. Uh, I would see myself using a super source a fair bit. I'd love to be able to rearrange the windows so that I could have one, two, three, four super source and then cover up maybe my stills over on the side. I think it'd be a much more useful thing to cover up on the menu. Or maybe it's something that we could put in the preview, you know, have this pop up in the preview side and not cover up any of the sources. Uh, just having some of those options, I think would be really helpful. The last thing I'd say is I think OC is listening to their customers. Um, I've been a part of their Facebook group. They're very active in there. And what I see in the software release here in 2.1.1 is definitely user driven. And the proof for that for me was when I first got this unit, I was really kind of bummed about the fact that the outputs of the HDMIs weren't routable. So in earlier versions, in the version I received, HDMI one was the output that you could route, which means you can take input one, two, three, or four and put that on the output, or you can put multi-view or program or preview or kind of anything else you wanted down that output. HDMI out two was always the multi-view. Now in the new version, I've been able to create a little macro here. So to record a macro, it's really simple. You press and hold the memory button here until it starts blinking. So now it's lit up and then I go into the menu. And in my case, I wanted to change. Uh, I'm going to go down to the settings and then I'm going to change the output 
my out source on HDMI 1. I'm gonna make that sort of multi-view. I'm gonna make that, let's make this one the aux because I haven't done that yet. So I would say aux and then we'll go back into the menu or I would just press and hold and I'm good to go. So now I have a button that I can see the aux source, I can see one, I can see two, I can see three, I can see four. I'm back to my multi-view. All that to say, in the new version of the software, HDMI 1 is writable, HDMI 2 is writable, which really proves I think OC is listening to their customers. All in all, I think this is a really interesting device. It's well thought out, the buttons make sense, the transition area is really good, it's really powerful. And I think if you actually need to switch a little show, this is a great unit to do it. It doesn't have every option. It's not as flexible as some switchers, but it comes at the price of simplicity. And sometimes simplicity is better than complexity. I'm Carl Larson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.